Today, I'll show you how to edit shorts and TikToks like Music Media. This is probably the most requested video on my channel, so let's not waste any time and let us begin. Okay, so the first thing to do is to gather clips that we're gonna use for the edit. I have a good tip on how to gather these clips easily. Let's say your edit is about Kendrick Lamar's halftime show, for example. You can go to YouTube, find your specific clips, download them using this free website if you want, or you can put these videos on full screen and start recording them using OBS. That's how you can quickly get your clips. Now let's focus on the audio effects. To achieve this slow down reverb effect, we can go to Premiere, right click our layer, speed slash duration, and slow our song down. But I think I have a better way for more accurate results. Open up After Effects, and after importing your song, right click your layer. Expand the time option, and then click on time stretch. Normally it's set to 100%, but to slow the song down, increase the percentage slightly. Click OK, you can listen to it, and to make it sound better, go to the effects panel, search for bass and treble, and drag it onto your layer. In the effect controls panel, make the bass negative 10 in value, and the treble something like negative 30. All I ever wanted was a black grand national. But here is the thing though, you can always make this even more interesting. Let me show you. For example, right before the drop happens, you can keyframe the treble setting, move a few frames forward, and lower the treble value even further to make this deep audio effect. Hit you on the keyboard to see your keyframes, then right before the drop happens, make another keyframe, then move a few frames forward, and drag the treble back to negative 30 or whatever value you happen to have. You can always drag these keyframes on the timeline for better effect. You can also add sort of a fade out by adding the same effect at the end of the layer. And once you're happy, click on file, click on add to render queue, click the setting and set your file to mp3. Click ok and then click on render. Okay, now in Premiere Pro, before doing any sort of editing, we gotta resize our clips to the vertical format. Go to Sequence, Sequence Settings, Time Base can be set at 60 frames per second, and the frame size should be at 1080 by 1920. Click OK. Now resize your clips using the Effect Controls panel to fit the screen. Okay, so I cut out a bunch of clips as you can see, and I decided to go for an M&M edit, and we'll try to replicate this music media short that got 93 million views. I went for the same formula as you can see, fast paced clips. The intro is just this old ass overused meme. I know, I just lack creativity. But you may notice I left a little gap at the very end. Music media ends their shorts in a smooth way, so when the video loops, it flows right back into the first clip. So to do that, duplicate the first clip you have by holding Alt and dragging it upward. Take this duplicated clip and put it right at the end of the timeline. The first frame of the clip should be the last frame of the entire short. I hope this makes sense for you by the way. Now drag the first frame to the left to fill up this gap. And that's how you get this smooth ending effect. Okay, now that we got the audio effects, the theme of this short, the clips cut out nicely on the timeline, let's add the first video effect, which is gonna be the head tracking effect. And we're gonna use After Effects for this one. Let's right click this clip for example, and let's click on replace with After Effects composition. Here in After Effects, make sure the tracker tab is opened up. And now what you wanna do is you wanna click on the stabilize motion. And then once this box appears on the screen, drag it towards the nose of your subject. Of course, make sure you're on the first frame of the clip. Now click on Options, and make sure the setting right here is set to Adapt Feature. Then after that, go ahead and click on Analyze. It will not take a long time because the video is very short and in low quality, but after that's done, click on Apply. Click OK, and the cool thing is that if we go back to Premiere Pro, you can see that the effect has already been applied to our clip. Now feel free to add this effect onto other clips as well, if your subject is moving his head a lot for example, I suggest you don't add this, especially if the nose is covered, because the motion tracking won't work properly. If you get this gap in your clip and want to remove it, just zoom in on your clip a little bit in the effect controls. Now let's add some zoom in and zoom outs to our clips. Because each clip has a different size value, 
right click the clip you're working with and click on nest sequence. Go back to the beginning of the clip, click the stopwatch to make a keyframe, move either 10 frames forward or 5 frames depending on your clip's duration and then once you've done that, increase the value of the scale setting to 125. You can choose a different value of course but that's good for me. Now select these keyframes and right click them with your mouse. Click on ease in, select them again and right click them. Now choose the option ease out and once that's done, click on this drop down arrow here and basically move these two blue lines closer together in the middle to sort of make a wave like this. And that's how you get that smooth zoom in effect. Now for the zoom out, go to the ending point of your clip and go back 5 frames on the timeline. Hit C on the keyboard and make a cut. Now keyframe the starting point of this newly independent clip, leave the value at 125 and move to the end and reset the value to 100%. You can then ease in and ease out these keyframes just like we did beforehand and make the wave in the middle. I know this can sound confusing, especially for beginners, but you can always pause the video, rewind the part that you're struggling with, or you can just comment your questions down below and I'll be happy to answer them. Now I will show you a quick trick to apply this effect onto other clips without a lot of effort. Select the first clip which has the zoom in effect, right click the motion tab in the effect controls, click on save preset, name this preset something like zoom in mm, mm stands for music media, so you can find it easily in the future. Choose anchor to end point and click OK. Select the clip containing the zoom out, save the preset, and this time, name it something like zoom out mm. Nest your next clip, and after that, drag the zoom in preset here. Go to the ending point of your clip and move back 5 frames. Make a cut, and then drag the zoom out preset. My name is Juan. You can also zoom in one clip if it's too short. Go to the second clip and zoom it out. That works as well. You can also be creative with it and click on the scale setting. This icon will pop up indicating the anchor point. Drag the anchor point towards your subject's face, then increase the value of the scale. Then you can zoom out the clip like this. Now I will show you a few transitions that Music Media uses and we'll start off with this one. So go to your project panel and click on this icon. Then click on adjustment layer. We'll name this layer something like dark transition. Drag it onto the timeline. Now place the starting point of this layer on top of the starting point of this clip for example. Move two frames forward, hit C on the keyboard and make a cut. Then delete this leftover part. Move two frames backwards, then expand the layer. This is basically the entire length of our transition. Go to the effects panel and search for lumetri color. Drag it onto the layer and in the effect controls, expand the basic tab section. Then what you want to do next is you want to place the time indicator in the middle where the two clips meet. Decrease the exposure to the maximum value and then make a keyframe. Go to the start, reset the exposure value, then go to the end and reset the exposure value to make it zero again. That's how you make this transition. You can then duplicate this layer by holding Alt or the Option key on Mac and drag it onto the timeline and you can place it between two other clips if you want or even in the middle of just one clip if it's long enough. There is also this color for transition, you can duplicate your adjustment layer, go to the effect controls panel and basically remove the exposure keyframes by clicking on the stopwatch, reset the value of the exposure and instead we're gonna go to the middle point of this layer and we're gonna keyframe the temperature, the tint and the saturation. And we're gonna increase their values randomly, it doesn't have to be an exact value but the key is to move one frame backwards, change the values of these settings slightly Again, it doesn't have to be an exact value, then go back to the starting point and reset the values. Now go back to the middle point, move one frame forward this time and change the values of these three settings slightly and you get the idea from there. And that's how you should get this effect. You can also add this layer on top of one clip, it doesn't have to be a transition between two clips and it could match the beat I guess and make your edit more hypnotic. To keep things organized you can make a folder in your project panel and drag your transitions into that folder and of course give each one of them a specific name. Now onto the black and white transition slash effect, I duplicated an adjustment layer and I basically removed all of the keyframes and now the same thing as always, go to the center of the layer but this time only keyframe the saturation setting and set its value to zero. As soon as we did that, the video is now in black and white. Go two frames backwards and reset the value. Go two frames forward from the center and reset the value. Speaking of black and white, I also saw music media applying this effect where the face of the subject is in color, meanwhile the background is in black and white. If you want to replicate that effect, 
Hold Alt and drag your desired clip to the top to duplicate it. Select the top layer and go to the effect controls panel. Activate the free bezier tool and draw a mask around your subject's face. If we hide the layer that's at the bottom, you can see that Eminem's face is now isolated from the rest of his body. Now increase the mask feather slightly, then click on the track mask forward button so we can track the face when it's moving. Alright, so that kinda looks a bit funny if you ask me. Let's get the bottom layer visible again. And let's add the lumetry color onto that layer. In the effect controls, if we lower the saturation to zero, you will see that the face stays in color and the rest becomes black and white. You can also add a short transition by keyframing the setting and resetting the values etc. So yeah, that's how you get this effect. Now to get this reddish bloody transition, select your duplicated layer, again under lumetry color, search for the color wheels and match setting and open it up. Here select the red color from these three wheels, then make sure you're on the middle of the layer and basically click on the stopwatch. Like we did previously, go back two frames back and reset the values. Let me know if you want the presets of this tutorial by leaving a like on the video. Also make sure to subscribe and comment down below if you want them or not. You can also support me further by becoming a member on the channel which will allow me to make more long form guides like this. So yeah, thank you guys. Now I saw some music media shorts included this shake transition effect. We'll use a plugin called AE Juice for this one. I already talked about it in previous videos. Follow the link below to use it, download it, buy the full license and then head back to Premiere. Go to extensions and you will see it sitting there. Open it up. Now search for seamless transitions. This is the pack we're gonna use. Click on shake and now all you have to do to use one of these effects is to select both of your clips on the timeline and then simply double click on the transition of your choice. And that's it. You also would get a nice sound effect on top as well. So yeah, definitely check out AE Juice, link below. It's time for us to add this flicker effect. Make a new adjustment layer Go to the effects panel and search for strobe light and apply it onto that layer. You can always rename your layer, maybe something like flicker if you want. In the effect controls, make the strobe color black instead of white. Set the strobe duration value to 0.03. Set the strobe period to 0.06. Click on this box and set the setting to make layer transparent. Also set the strobe operator to screen. So the effects are overwhelming and unhinged for now. That's why we need to lower the opacity a little bit and that's how we get that subtle flickering effect. You can always make the flicker slower. For example, you can set the strobe period to 0.1. So yeah. Now for the color grade, make yet another adjustment layer. Put it on top of everything and add the lumetry color effect onto it. In the effect controls, scroll all the way down and expand the vignette section. And if you lower this value, you will get some nice dark edges around the corner and it could help make your video look better in my opinion. Now go to the basic tab section. You can mess around with the exposure for example and the contrast etc. But I think for those who are looking for easier solution to color grade, you can use the AE Juice Pack which has a lot of built in presets for color grading your videos. Search for a pack called Color Grading LUT. Click on standard. And then click on the Baby Driver standard preset. The file explorer will open up automatically. So basically copy the directory of this path right here with Ctrl C or Command C. Then go back to Premiere and under the basic tab section right here where it says input LUT, click on this box and then click on browse. Now paste the directory with Ctrl V here. Grab the name of the LUT file you just clicked on which is the baby driver in my case. And that's it. As you can see, we successfully color graded our video pretty quickly, I would say. And you don't have to apply this exact LUT preset, but generally, this plugin could help color your video really easily and make it look better. Before we jump ahead to the last and most important bit of our video, which is the captions animation, let's talk about how you could enhance your video. Because if you haven't noticed, my clips just look like shit. They're old and they're 720p max in quality. You should always work with 4K footage, but I couldn't find that with Eminem's 1990s music videos. But you can always make yet another adjustment layer. Then you can go to the effects panel and search for sharpen. And what you basically want to do is you want to add the sharpen and the unsharpen effects. In the effect controls, simply make the sharpen value 10 and the unsharpen value 100. And this will enhance your video really well, especially if it looks like shit, just like mine. Alright, now we're on the final stage of this guide. It's time for us to add some captions onto our video. Let's switch to the captions and graphics interface. Once you're here, click on create captions from transcript. 
Now make sure to lower the maximum characters per caption and also lower the maximum duration. Set this option to single lines and click on create captions. After you have done that, select your caption layers and put them in the middle of the screen. Make sure they are a little bit bigger in size so they can be visible enough. You can also change their font to Poppins Bold for example. If you don't have this font, you can check out the link below and download it. Then you can install it on your computer. Great, now let's focus on the animation aspect. Select your caption layers and head over to the graphics and titles menu. Click on upgrade caption to graphic. And we did that so we can apply the different effects and animations onto them now. So the first thing we'll focus on is the color effect. Select your layers, then hold alt or option and drag them upward to duplicate them. Select each one of your top captions and give each one of them a unique color of your choice. Alright, now that we got that out of the way, let's add this effect where the color of the text slowly fades to white. Select one of the layers that you have on the timeline, go to the effects panel and keyframe the opacity setting. Go to the end and change the value to zero. Now select the opacity setting and right click it. Click copy and while holding shift, select random layers that you want to apply the effect onto and hold control or command and V at the same time to paste them. That's how we get this effect. Okay, now let's add the color shifting animation. Select any random caption and any effect controls, expand this drop down here. Basically, keyframe the source text setting right here for the stunning frame of the text layer. Select the last few letters and change their colors to white. Move a few frames forward, activate the eyedropper tool and click on the same color. Now select the first part of your word and set its color to white. This is how it should look like. You can do the same thing to other random layers. Now onto the snapping animation. To replicate the effect, search for directional blur in the effects panel. Make sure you're on the first frame. Hit the stopwatch of the blur length and set its value to 30. Then move forward 3 frames and reset the value back to 0. To quickly apply this onto all of the other layers, right click the directional blur setting. Click copy, then select the other text layers and hit Ctrl V or Command V. To add some subtle wobbling effect, select the layers again and right click them. Click on Nest. Select this new layer and go to the effect controls panel. Keyframe the position setting for the starting frame, then move 20 frames forward on the timeline and change the position slightly. Move 20 more frames and now change the Y or X position. Move 20 more frames again and change the position again and again and you can copy these keyframes after doing one full lap with Ctrl C, move 20 frames forward again and then paste them with Ctrl V. Remind me to drop the presets for you so you can skip all this work by leaving a like and dropping a comment down below. Now for this glow effect, duplicate the nested sequence by holding Alt and dragging it upwards. Search for Gaussian Blur in the effects panel and apply it to the bottom nest sequence. And all you have to do next is increase the blurriness a bit. Finally, I guess you can add some sound effects in between some of the clips. And you can use AE Juice for that. That's it for this tutorial, I hope it was clear enough. Again, you can come back to any point in the video, pause it or rewind it. You can also comment your questions down below. This was a headache to make. Goodbye.